Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, give me one second. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay. Perfect. Um, so this is um, Malini, so Malini Sengupta. I'm the Yellowknife Immigration Partnership Coordinator uh, and I'm located in Yellowknife. And today we are gonna be talking about the new pathways to permanent residency. And I have Alec with myself. Hello, my name is Alexander Kovacevic. I'm working as Immigration Recruitment and Career Officer with Incidetna Economic Development Council of Northwest Territories. Thank you so much, Alec. So this is a new program which IRCC is gonna be launching on May 6th. It is not gonna be express entry. It's gonna be similar to um, Canadian experience class. And uh, to make sure uh, today we are going to be walking you through certain points. So we are definitely going to talk about how you temporary residents. So anybody who is a foreign worker with a valid work permit and a student with study permit can transition into permanent residency through this pathway. We're gonna to touch on a few public policies. We're gonna talk about the streams. So stream A is basically essential services for healthcare workers. Stream B is for essential service for non-healthcare workers, international graduates, French speaking and bilingual candidates. And we'll also talk about how to apply for this program. We'll touch upon a few technical tips. And also you have to understand this entire process and policies and uh, regulations would be there in the guidelines. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, there, these are new pathways we are talking about. There are no guidelines, as you mentioned, Malini. And yet, uh, so, so we are still learning, in fact. and. Uh, all the information we are providing right now are thanks to Katie. Yeah, so I'm going to reinstate the same thing. IRCC, why, 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 when we are recording this, IRCC has not yet launched the guidelines. So we, me and Alec, we learned about this program through an uh, association for CAPIC. That's basically for all regulated uh, Canadian immigration consultant and immigration lawyers in Canada. And these are some great tips that we have learned and we wanted to share it with you guys, but reinstating that you have to read and study the guidelines before you apply on May 6th. So, what is this new pathway? So as per IRCC, this is a one-time temporary pathway to permanent residency. Saying that, remember uh, that the points fell to 75. And one of the main reasons why they, the points fell to 75 and they had sent out almost 30,000 invitation is what they're trying to do is focusing on uh, turning the temporary resident within Canada to permanent residents. And this is another program they are launching uh, so that they are highlighting essential. So if you look at it, it's essential service. It is uh, international graduates. But remember IRCC, there would be a lot of people falling through the cracks and you'll say, hey, you know, why they haven't, you know, covered my NOC or your stream. I what we are learning is there might be more and more programs coming in but as of now this particular pathway for essential service international graduates and french speaking candidates and bilingual candidates this is their program okay granting permanent residency to certain temporary resident in canada who meets the condition of the public policy including as i said temporary foreign workers and essentials uh, in essentials occupation and recent international graduate. What is the program of the length of this program? This, this basically pathway is from May 6th to November 5th. But remember what Alec is going to say next. Yes, these pathways have an overall cap of 90,000 uh, 90, applications. So depending on the stream, a maximum 20,000 or 30,000 applications will be accepted for processing, plus 40,000 applications for international students. But attention here, the cap might be filled very, very quickly. 
And um, um, I'm also, uh, what's also interesting that there is that France speaking and bilingual, for France speaking and bilingual can, uh, candidates, there is, a, there is another pathway. Um, so that French and bilingual, uh, for French and bilingual cam, uh, candidates, there is no intake app for, uh, for these candidates who have scored at least CLB4 level, so CLB4 on improved French language test. And uh, it is applicable for all streams. In fact, more precisely, individuals uh, with demonstrated French language abilities will be able to apply for separate public policies with similar eligibility criteria. And when we are talking about the eligibility criteria, in order to be eligible, uh, the candidate has to have at least one year of full uh, time uh, authorized work experience in Canada or um, equivalent part time within the uh, within three years immediately preceding uh, the application in an eligible occupation designated as essential occupations in Annex A and Annex B. At the moment of application, the candidate has to be currently employed in Canada, but in any occupation. So that's pretty important. And deployment must be the definition of work uh, under subsection 73 uh, 2 of the regulations. So uh, a quick, quick tip what, uh, what Alex said is um, uh, you have to accumulate one year of full time or part time experience. So the number of hours is 1560. So if you calculate this in your calculation, if you put in, let's say, um, uh, I'm going to do a quick calculation. Give me a second. I'm going to take out my calculator. I did that earlier. So um, if you are looking at, uh, uh, so that's um, 1560. I'm going to divide this by 52 weeks. So you're looking at a standard of like any other program, 30 hours per week. So if you, if, if you are applying uh, for any uh, federal program, the minimum is 30 hours. So anybody who has part-time or full-time in, uh, so minimum one year in the last three years. So for an example, uh, I'll give you an example, a really, really good example out here. If you are working as a student, so that means you do 20 hours. So you do 20 hours into 52, that's 1040 hours. That means if you work for in the last three years in year and a half, you will become eligible. So, so you have to kind of play around a little bit around this because you as a foreign national, uh, not only as a worker, but if you are a student, you'll become eligible because if, if I am looking at it as 1560 hours and I'm gonna divide this by 1560 um, divided by, uh, so let's say you guys work 20 hours. Uh, so 78 weeks, which means, um, yeah, so it's it's basically seventy eight weeks means one year and another twenty six weeks. So it's, it's it's amazing. So so you guys need to focus. So this is really cool. Like they say, one five six zero hours. If you have more questions, you basically should send us an email and we can will be able to help you. So going back to the seventy three two regulation. What, what does that mean is it means you have to have a valid status and you cannot be self-employed. Yes, and when we were talking about these essential occupations, uh, so stream A, uh, it's one year of or the equivalent work as you uh, just mentioned, Malini, work experience in one or more occupations listed in Annex A. So, uh, experience cannot be combined with Annex B occupations. So that's interesting. So Stream A is a PR pathway for healthcare workers. Though. So we have the maximum here of 20,000 applications with the, exception, with the exception of veterinarians and animal health technologists and veterinary technicians, but including five occupations from board occupations category four. Uh, these are occupations in education, law, and social community and government services. While stream B includes other 
eligible essential occupations. Uh, as you can see, uh, in stream A, experience cannot be combined with Annex B occupations. What does it mean, in fact? For example, a nurse, so for stream A, a nurse can work as a dentist, but not as a cashier uh, for stream A. For example, for stream B, it is possible to combine. So a cashier can work as a dentist or nurse. So uh, the experience can be combined in stream A, but not in stream B. And uh, in order to, uh, for, the next, uh, the, for the next slide, so in order to get a list of eligible health-related occupations in Annex A or other eligible essential occupations listed in Annex B, uh, please visit IRCC website. So you can type uh, just on Google Annex A and- The link, the link is gonna be yeah. given, Alec, out here. Yes, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, for example, dentists are eligible, we have a lot of dentists by mention, mentioning them because we have a lot of dentists, uh, temporary residents in NWT. In Annex B, uh, you can see also that cashiers, retail, cl retail clerks, stockers and supervisors, plumbers, gas filters, carpenters, they are or they're all eligible. Perfect. So moving on, so what we covered, we cover, covered uh, the French uh, speaking candidates and bilingual one stream. And as Alec mentioned, they are eligible in all the streams. So they have no limit. So somebody who speaks French or who are bilingual, basically they can move around and they have no, 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 no quota, no limit. So great for a lot of people in NWD who speaks French and who are bilingual. Then Alec covered uh, stream A, which is uh, the essential workers for healthcare services. And then he covered stream B, which is basically the non-essential service, uh, sorry, essential service, but non-healthcare, like the crack cashiers, plumbers and all. So now we're gonna to touch upon on these three, what are the eligibility criteria? So remember, they have to have the language. Language is compulsory. They have to have a benchmark, language benchmark four. What does that mean? It means CLB level four. This is fantastic news, guys. This is fantastic. So a lot of times skilled trade workers uh, uh, have not... Uh, not like basically uh, what we call the FSW uh, federal skill worker have to have a CLB level seven and a lot of time people really struggle with that. In this, they have lowered the CLB level is just four. The test results like any other express entry process, they have to be valid and they have to be less than two years. What all the, um, the exams, which sorry, the test, which language test, which you can take is ILTS, general, SERP, General, TIF Canada, and TCF Canada. The and the and the this is the biggest thing. The language results can be received through email or any other online portal. So when you log in, you'll see your results. Fantastic. You do not have to wait for the courier to come in and get the certificate. So this is this is unlike you know how you go uh, uh, on an express entry um, uh, once you basically creating your profile, they'll ask you the test date and they'll ask you when you have received. So basically we'll be able to do this, like give five business days, uh, we are sitting right now in second. So what I would suggest is go and book a test like immediately as of tomorrow. Okay, what does uh, another important eligibility criteria, you have to remember status and physical presence. You have to, be a temporary resident and eligible or like uh, you can be on implied status or be eligible to restore their status. Note that refugee claimant do not have a valid temporary status. That means they would not be eligible. You have to, have to, have to be physically present in Canada at the time of application is received. So you, you have to be there when you're applying, you have to be there then it is approved. You cannot be, so any temporary resident, your status is resident, but you have to be physically. So there's nothing, there's, there's no question mark to that. 
Yes, and uh, when you're talking about this uh, central occupations and settlements after PR, uh, this is very interesting for those residing in Quebec in this morning. As you might know, Quebec has the authority to select the majority of its sound immigrants and determine its annual immigration targets. So Quebec is not included in this new permanent residency program due to Canada-Quebec Accord. However, the individual, individuals interested to apply under this program must intend to reside in a province or territory other than Quebec. It means they have to provide a letter of explanation which proves that they have intention to live outside of Quebec. For example, uh, it can be a letter of explanation that they're searching for a job outside of Quebec or that they plan to enroll their kids in the school outside of the province or buying or renting a property elsewhere and etc. And Malini, will you talk about this essential occupation, occupations application process? Yeah. So uh, Alec mentioned uh, if you, you will be eligible to apply uh, when, <laughs> if you're in Quebec and what it's needed. So now we are going to move very quickly in how the application will go. So the application is online. It's not a paper-based application. Make sure all the proof you want to submit to satisfy your eligibility and an officer needs to be ready. Moving into the last stream, which is international graduates. So we covered, as I said, we covered uh, stream A, stream B, and uh, French speaking candidates are eligible at any other streams. Um, so international graduates have to complete their program no earlier than January 2017. They should have the letter of completion. They basically should be authorized to study throughout their program, sorry, throughout the time they have been in Canada. Be employed in Canada. If they're employed in Canada, you have to have a valid permit or an authorization to work. So when you come in uh, at a port of entry, when you're a student, you will get the work permit. So you have to have a valid work permit if you want to claim the points for your work. You have to have CLB level five. So this is different from stream A, stream B. So you have to have a CLB level five in order to be eligible. You have to like any like any other other streams. You have to be uh, of have to have a valid temporary resident status and physically be present when you are applying and when you are receiving it. Even students from Quebec are eligible, and the cap is forty thousand out here. Yes, so uh, I think it's really important to point out. So for the students, the criteria criteria is a CLB five, and for healthcare professionals and essential workers, CLB four, as you mentioned, Molini, before. And uh, for those international students and foreign workers that have been here in Canada during the pandemic and working in traditionally undervalued jobs, this could be a life changing opportunity, in fact, for them. Uh, However, the number of visas made available to transition to permanent residency will be capped at 90,000. If anything is certain here, competition will be fierce. If you are not preparing from now, you will be left behind. So that's, that's really important to, as you mentioned, you know, really to start the preparation immediately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alec and me, uh, we, um, as I said, we were in the workshop with KPIC and they have reinstated that uh, once it opens, the fastest will be the international graduate to go. So be prepared, guys. Get everything ready before May 6th. And uh, the rest of the thing, they are kind of speculating within a week or two. We'll probably finish the quotas. Okay, uh, so this is really important point. Uh, the credentials after completion of your study. Um, so as you can see, a degree which must be a degree issued uh, on a completion for a program of at least eight months. So what it means is uh, uh, you have these um, students who study language for six months, uh, they would not be eligible. It has to be at least eight months. And uh, this is a very, very interesting point. A degree on a diploma or a certificate um, uh, 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 or a, a 
attestation issued on completion of a program, uh, any duration leading any duration, this is leading to a skill trade uh, is listed in Annex 1. Before Alec covers this, I have to tell you a point. All the students have to be in designated learning institute, like graduate from designated learning institute. Only in this particular section, you can come out of a private college and then Alec will cover this section uh, uh, later on. I'll just cover one more point. Uh, for greater calorie, uh, clarity, each combined credential must meet. So for example, you have two degrees or two certificates, they have to, uh, eat. so if you want to combine, uh, each combined credential must meet the eligibility program, uh, including the completion no earlier than January, 2017. Alec, I'll give it to you. Yes, uh, Malini. So, uh, as, uh, as Malini said, uh, degree, diploma, certificate, or attestation issued on completion of a program of any duration leading to an occupation in a skilled trade. So, um, uh, listed in, uh, in Annex A. So, uh, these are the skilled trades. Uh, trade. So, we can see here butchers and bakers, chefs and cooks, etc. So, attention. Uh, not all of them are eligible essential occupations. So we are, uh, we, are, we are talking here about studies, you know, like, so uh, these are like studies leading to an occupation in a skilled trade. Uh, so there is a difference between occupation and this uh, study program. So if you are studying uh, to be a cook or a chef, yes, you're eligible, but it doesn't mean that uh, the, uh, the chef and cooks are essential uh, occupation, eligible essential occupation. So that's that's just, uh, I wanted to point out that difference. Great points, great points. Uh, physical present and intent, um, uh, we are re-emphasizing re this again and again and again. You have to be physically present in Canada at the time of application for your permanent residence is received and when the application is approved. You cannot, there is no second question. And you have to prove your intent to reside uh, in provinces or territories other than Quebec. Uh, jumping into, uh, going to cover a little bit mm. of the technical briefing and clarification out here. So I'm, the, I'm using express entry a lot and, you know, CEC Canadian experience class just to refer, but please understand this is going to be a separate program specific portal you cannot log in to your uh, gc key uh, and like do uh, express entry this is not, it's going to be a separate application that means you know how you log in to your gc key and you enter all of your details your name your date of birth your uh, your your, your uh, uh, passport numbers and everything this is going to be a separate one so be prepared to spend that time in order to enter all these data another thing i have to really really specify Nobody can help you in terms of doing this application. You have to do this application on your own. This particular program, no regulated immigration consultant or lawyers can do it for you and submit the application. People can support you in application, but they cannot submit it for you. So make sure if you are going to any um, regulated immigration consultant or lawyers, that submit button, everything is, is your, your owners. First step, you have to check your eligibility. What does that mean? It means you can be an international graduate, but you can also be eligible in stream B. That means you can put in two application, means you have to pay two fees. So first is check your eligibility. And if you're eligible in two stream, and if you want to spend that money, it's totally on, your, on you. Gather all the documents. All the documents has to be in electronic format. As I said, this is not a paper application. You have to create an account, upload the documents and submit the documents. This cannot can be only done by you and no other lawyers or regulated immigration consultant. I'm gonna talk a little bit about documentation. So as I said, this is a very similar we are, we are uh, this is the information we got we it's very similar to cec because you you keep on hearing you have to have one year of full time or part time work experience in this you don't need to show any proof of funds 
you have to, so in order to help you prepare, uh, there is a little bit of um, help which we can give you. Uh, so this is technically a document, uh, what we call a report. Um, this kind of helps you to gather all the documents. Uh, so this one will, um, if you look at this particular report, it's personal history. It talks about all of your work experience. And if you were employed, if you were unemployed, if you were studying uh, from, for last 10 years or since the age of 18. So if you create this report, you basically will be able to input this data on the online application, okay? Uh, employment history, same. If you, if you basically create this report, you're going, you're going to have a similar data input into the system education, your address, your family information, and your travel information. So this is, this is basically the, uh, the data which is needed once you create an express entry account. And once you get an ITA, which is invitation to apply, then you also need this data. So make sure you have this ready. Um, you can also get in touch with us. There are a few forms which they kind of highlighted to us that we can use. It's basically uh, a, a similar to uh, family information form, similar to application of permanent residency form, background uh, uh, form. And what, what we'll do is when we set, uh, when we'll put this presentation up, we will try and uh, uh, give a link to those forms so that you guys can click and download. So either you can download those forms and fill it up as a data input, but I like this report. One of the main reason I like this report is you can just you can just copy paste this from that so that it kind of really uh, helps you because if you're filling up a form, which I would suggest you should fill up that form also because that form will have your passport details. If you had canceled passports, all that. So this is one information which you can gather uh, from us. So you have to send out an email to us in order to get this information. And also another thing which you can do is, um, uh, as I said, scan all the documents. So scan all the documents. So what, what I do is I create subfolders so that you don't like scan all the documents and put it in one folder. This is what we do. So we have also have templates for your letter of explanation. Uh, you can drop in your documents or your police certificate, your passport, your offer of employment, marriage certificate, letter of employment, employment records, digital photo, uh, client information, and we have templates out here if you look at it. So what I always suggest is um, create for everything, create a table. So if you have, a, 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 you have to show that 1560 hours and you have, let's say, multiple work experience, uh, what you need to do is create a table with supporting documents. When I say supporting documents, you basically uh, should have your last three pay stubs. You should have your T4. You should have your tax returns. You should have your contract and scan everything. Make this as the primary first page and convert into PDF. Remember, remember, should not probably do more than 4 MB because that's a standard which they practice when you're doing express entry. Uh, I think I think we can basically go deeper. But again, if you need further information, get in touch with our settlement workers in NWT. Okay. Document required, as, as we are saying again and again, you have to submit an application for permanent residency. Uh, the forms provided by the Department of Public Policy, which must include the time of application, all proof necessary to satisfy an officer that the application meets the criteria of the public policy, Ex except for evidence required to demonstrate physical presence in Canada at the time of approval. Uh, the foreign nationals cannot be inadmissible. So what are the inadmissible? Criminal inadmissibility and medical inadmissibility. 
documents to be submitted. Do all documents have to be submitted on May 6th? The first submission of the application has to be a complete application. There is no invitation application process. So as I said, it's not like express entry where you create an account and then you get an invitation and then you submit. So you have to be ready for with all the documents. Exactly. And concerning the fact that the number of applicants is limited, uh, we would say sooner better. However, the process of application can be stressful. So pay attention that you collected all necessary documents and that there are no mistakes also in documentation. You are right, <laughs> because there is there's no there's no scope of uh, making any mistakes because they will not also ask the documents on this is one application and if it gets refused, uh, bad luck guys. Um, documents. Uh, okay, moving on to next slide. Authorization to work. So this is for international graduates. Post-graduation work permit is required for all international graduate stream. What does that mean? If you have graduated, you have a letter of, uh, letter of completion, you basically need to make sure you take that and you submit a post-graduation work permit. Then you go on implied status. Then only you'll be eligible. You cannot be eligible if you like, so as per the eligibility requirement, you need an authorization to work. You should maintain implied status, which you could get once you apply for your postgraduate. So be on the back of your designated learning institutes. Make sure you have the letter of a, a completion. Make sure you go online and submit that post-graduation work permit. You know, see, for employment, can my current employment be in any NOC? Yes, for all stream, current employment can be in any NOC for essential worker till the time they meet the experience requirement for their eligible NOC code in the last three years and their current NOC does not matter. Can my application, uh, can an applicant apply in multiple stream? As I said, yes, they must also pay the application fee for each application. You cannot use the same receipt for multiple application. Some tips. So earlier, I don't know if you guys remember, Earlier, we used to do application only principal applicant. So now all the family members are included. What does that mean? That means their documents should be ready too. Intake caps calculation calculated is a number of submissions. So it's going to be like, I think they should have a counter, you know, tick, 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 click. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. 19,099, like it's one more application. So be, be ready with your application. That's all we can say. Um, completeness check is different. Fee must include RPRF. And I don't know, but I'm speculating. I think if you get refused, you don't get the feedback. Uh, so as I said, um, what form which you would do you would do uh so you can just uh, but, but again you know we will we will give away these forms for you guys uh when we upload but you can just uh download the 008 uh this form is uh, what we call uh application to give me a second it's just going to take a little bit of uh, save and so there would be other forms which you can take. Either you can take the report which I created, but I, I would strongly recommend you to download this form. Uh, as usual, sometimes it's uh, never easy for me to open. Let me see if I can open, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Is it the general application form? Yeah. I'm just trying to open this. You know how? Okay, fine. It's not going to open. Uh, Alec, can you open in your laptop by any chance? Okay, doesn't matter. We, we, we basically will give them the forms later on. Um, yeah. 
Uh, as I said, IRCC will be releasing the guidelines soon. So make sure you guys uh, read the guidelines and we have tried to give you as much as tips we can. And thank you so much everyone to patiently listen to us. Here you have the contact details of Alec and myself. Alec takes care of uh, um, the immigration uh, and recruitment uh, for Sedetno for bilingual candidates. But if uh, if uh, some of some of your application might not be relevant, we have in Sedetno Atulia who might be of help, and there are other settlement workers which we call SPOs who would might come in and assist you with information but if you have any questions please send an email um Alec uh, I think we haven't included our email so I think uh, we will update the slide and give our email and then everybody can get in touch with us thank you so much uh and I'll give it to Alec to say bye to you guys Thank you for your attention and uh, good luck with your applications. Yeah, good luck. Thanks, Bye. Alec.